everybody. Welcome to our December 28th edition of Wall Street Winners. Started in 1995. That's 25 years ago. Amazing. Amazing. This is, uh, remember, we've got uh, New Year's Eve. We're open. So we're open on Thursday, but closed on Friday. And of course, this is open 24 hours a day. Unbelievable. Okay, so my attitude towards the market is changing. As you know, I've been very bullish on the market uh, for a number of weeks, uh, months, really, uh, of varying degrees. But I'm starting to think we're going to start to have a dip in January. A modest dip, maybe 3 to 5%, but nonetheless, a dip. So let's take a look. Right here, you can see that... Early in the week, late the previous week, we made new all-time highs on the S&P. But look at the purple predictor is starting to come down, and it's diverging. So on the day that the market made a new all-time high, about five business days ago, the purple predictor did not. And then four days ago, the market came down hard, but closed pretty nicely. It didn't make a new low but the purple predictor did. So we have to watch very closely the fact that the purple predictor shows that we're seeing some selling, some profit taking from the smart money. Over here on the Dow Industrials, take a look in the right-hand box up there, and you can see that the red line selling pressure, it's going down, but buying pressure, the green line has dropped almost in half of where it was at the beginning of November. Now, part of that might be the holiday season, but nonetheless, they're both going down. They're still positive, but getting less and less positive. Now look right below the red box and you can see that the Dow keeps making higher highs and higher lows in a very sluggish manner. I mean, it's really weak. Now look right below that and you'll see the green line, which is the RSI, is making lower highs and lower lows. This is the central problem in the market. We're just simply running out of upside momentum. Combined with the purple predictor showing that the smart money's selling, I think after Jan 1, we're going to see a sell-off. The NASDAQ made a new all-time high on, on late in the week. This is fantastic. But notice the purple predictor started to weaken. Not as weak as the S&P, it's true. So we'd rather be in NASDAQ type stocks than any other type of stocks. And then notice the little skinny green line, that's the RSI. We see that the NASDAQ went and exploded to new highs, but well, the RSI did not. Once again, a momentum divergence, which should lead to at least a short-term dip in the market. No major bear market, just a dip. Our seasonality remains strong, so that's very, very good. Utilities, uh, we're just neutral on utilities at this point. Uh, here we see, we can see this last week or so should be very, very good for the uh, market. Uh, the green line is the best line to pick, then followed by the blue, and you should ignore the red line at the bottom. So what about next year? Well, <laughs> we got a plate of spaghetti. So if we look at all years, that would be the black line, which is kind of running up at the top and, and uh, is pretty bullish. I mean, really, pretty much bullish all year long. Now, if we go to all post-election years, which it is, that's the green line. And you can see that it's pretty flat in January. Then it dips in February. It's pretty flat in March. And then we get a little bit of a rally to May, then a dip in June, then a rally to August, then a dip into September, then a normal seasonal fourth quarter rally. But the one we really need to take a look at is the purple line, which is down near the bottom, and the red line. The purple line is the first year of a Democratic president, which is what we have here. And you can see that that one dips in January, rallies late in January into early Feb, then drops again to an even lower low into early March. And then after that, it's pretty much bullish for the rest of the year. So I'd be willing to put up with a two-month drop in order to get that kind of bullishness for the rest of the year. But the post-election year after the incumbent party loss, that's the red line. It's not so good. 
So at this point, I'm hoping that it's the purple line, which is the first year Democratic president. And then I'm going to combine that with the green line, which is uh, all post-election years. And so which one, which scenario is the correct one? We have to see how prices develop. Do they go sideways in January or do they dip? If they dip, that tells us a lot that it might be the first year Democratic president and post-election year after incumbent party loss lines are the most important ones. If we go flat, then I'm hoping that means that it's the all post-election year scenario. So we're going to let the market tell us. But the best case scenario is that we're flat in January. The worst case is that we dip. And given those momentum divergences that I've been talking about, I think we're going to dip. Okay, asset allocation. You can see no more money's coming into the stock market. We're just flat here for the last couple of weeks. So money between the stock and the bond market, it's going nowhere. But risk is slowly creeping higher. I think that people are getting uh, more and more. They're saying, well, maybe COVID's not a problem. So people are starting to take a little bit more risk than they have in the past. Not dramatic, but nonetheless, it's good to see more risk taking in the market. Global shares took a hammering and have yet to rally back up to new all-time highs that they made a week ago. A lot of that has to do with the potential for a failure for Brexit, but it looks like they worked out a deal, and it looks like a pretty good deal, mainly a free trade zone again. Yield curve keeps uh, creeping higher overall, but has been flat now for almost two months. So maybe the Fed has gotten to the point where they're happy. Bonds chop, chop, chop down. Notice the purple predictor remains on a bear mode. So I think we're going to see bonds continue to move lower. That means higher uh, long-term interest rates, and that means probably a stronger yield curve. Bond key factors. So we really went into detail on this last week, but generally speaking, they're telling us that we should see higher bond yields. Not necessarily dramatically higher, but higher. So once again, I want to be short TLT or something like that or short bonds themselves. The dollar remains in a bear market. Now, this is mainly against a few key currencies, not the yen, but against the euro, Swiss, pound, Aussie, and Canada. That's enough. And I think we'll continue to move lower this year. We're going to see an easier Fed this year. We're going to see uh, a lot of fiscal stimulus. I think they're going to try, at least uh, President Biden's going to try to get through more fiscal stimulus. I uh, don't know that the, Repu I'm assuming that the Republicans will retain control of the Senate. That's the betting right now. Gold, star as we now have higher highs and higher lows. So this is looking much better. The problem is, is that the heavy resistance is still above the market up there at the 1960 area, and we're at 1880. So it's easy to say that we may see gold rally up to 1950, 1960, but too much risk for too little reward. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until we break above that high that we made in early November, just over 1960. And then I want to get really aggressive again at gold because I think there's a lot of background bullish features in gold. They're not all perfect yet. They're not all lined up perfect yet, but we're getting there. Gold key indicators remain bullish last week, if you remember, like we had three bullish. Um, and now it's a more mixed bag. Let's call it neutral overall. Uh, because the yen, that's the, the bottom panel, it started to move down. After, last week, it was all going up. Crude oil finally faded. <laughs> I've been wrong about crude oil now for a month or so. Well, let's say six weeks, something like that. Hopefully, I'm right now. And I just don't see that they're going to want to push oil higher than $50 a barrel. Right in here, once it gets up above 50, then they start to see the Americans come back in. And at 60, the Americans will come in big time. I don't think that the that OPEC plus Russia wants the Americans in this market. And so they'll keep the price probably below 50 and definitely below 60. Bitcoin exploded again. So the purple predictor just started moving higher again, uh, breaking it out to the upside. So you got to be back on the bull side. I was, uh, as you know, bullish. We got the first part of this rally from about uh, 13,000 up to 19,000. Then I got out. 
Uh, and then it broke out to a new high here. So we got to be back onto the bull side. All right, freebies, love having you here. Uh, fully paid up members, hang on just one second. <laughs> 